The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Right, hello, good afternoon, everyone. It's um, it's it's another chorus webinar with myself, Guy, um, it's and Marco. It's the PR teams managing communications remotely session today. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. So we'll be talking, obviously, saying hi and seeing how everyone is, uh, let you know what's going on with us at the moment, um, and then Marco will take you through series of demonstrations, obviously, funnily enough, focused around PR teams and how you can help manage communications remotely. And of course, uh, we'll have time for questions and answers um, at the end of today. So if there are any, you know, burning questions whilst you've been working from home the last few weeks <laughs> about Chorus, uh, feel free to get them in early so that we can um, get to those at the end of the session. Um, and obviously, you know, we just, of course, as ever, um, hope you're all staying safe and well at the moment. Marco and I are obviously working separately. We're both at home at the moment. And uh, yeah, uh, no, that's true. <laughs> and obviously we can't see each other. So. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to say something. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll confirm that. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, on a serious note, you know, hope you're all staying well, staying safe, and um, you know, if you need us in for anything work related, obviously um, we are all at work uh, remotely for Third Light. So, yeah. with no further ado, really, um, what else shall do? Um, obviously, today is focused on you know public relations and how you can use course to help facilitate uh, managing all of your different comms and so on. So, at this point, I'm going to hand over to my um, glamorous colleague who will uh, take you through uh, a, a few di different demonstrations on chorus so marco bear with me a second whilst i just yeah. pass control over to yeah. you and i'll make sure that everything is fine on this side yeah it is yeah as that uh goes through hi everyone and i'll show my screen that my one to my screen too that should be the right one yes i can see that perfect hi hi yeah. everyone um yeah it's all working out so today we're looking at Quora's as interpreted by potentially a public relations teams. Quora's is in many ways a tool not just for some people in your company or a part of your organization. It's a tool for most teams, most people, more, most people uh, to work, to work together, to collaborate. And, and today we'll see a lot of communicating and sharing the right files at the right time with the right people, et cetera, which is kind of what, what PR people are about, right? They manage important communications that need to be very clear and specific and following guidelines. So they need a certain amount of control and also, you know, all the T's need to be uh, crossed and all the I's need to be done. So uh, that's hopefully what Coros can help them do. Uh, it's good to know that like, it's good to Keep in mind that PR team are probably not yet on Chorus, if you bought Chorus, I would imagine. They may think it's not for them. They may think, well, we don't have fancy media. What do we need Chorus for? But hopefully today we'll see a few ways that they can leverage the features and abilities and things that Chorus can do for you, uh, where they will find value in actually bringing the things, the files on Chorus, as opposed to what it may be using now, maybe a file server or some other service. Anyway. The RPR person for the day, we created a new user, uh, Hermione Granger. We have a bit of a tradition now to call uh, new users uh, with Harry Potter character names. So we thought Hermione was the perfect fit for PR. I don't know, just she gave me, she gives me that vibe. And we can see in this space that I made for Hermione, like the kind of stuff that the PR would probably want to store on course. I want to show you something first before I kind of start diving into that. Obviously, Hermione has access to her area that she's managing, et cetera, but also to an everyone area where it's a bit of a hub for the whole company. And if we go to this other user, the CEO, you know, 
Juliet. Uh, she is not a Harry Potter character. She's uh, one of our usual users. Uh, we can see wait, something very interesting. This is the same site. Uh, however, despite the fact that Juliet is an admin, a CEO, we set it up in a way that she can't get into the PR space. You know, that's Hermione's uh, realm, if you want. That's something you can do in Chorus, and it's important to know, and it could be a way to convince public relations that, don't worry, you, you can safely go on to Chorus. You know, people are not going to see your stuff. You can keep it for yourself. No matter who people are, they, you can keep it secret. Now you know Juliet is an admin, so she could, through you know, support backdoor if you want to almost uh, get in there if there's a need, if things need to be checked. However, that's audited as well, so PR can rest assured that it's not going to be done when it's not necessary, right? So they can have that sort of like independence and autonomy that PR needs. Anyway, just going back to uh, what Harmony can do. And I'll show you a few examples of, again, the ways that uh, she can leverage and the sort of stuff that she would you want to have on Chorus. Right, so what does PR do? For example, PR, PR can have uh, work in progress articles. Maybe there is here, as you can see, a draft of a document. Hermione is working on Word on this document on her computer, uh, but she can upload, a PDF, uh, upload it on, um, on Chorus and so other people can see it, other people within the PR team or uh, very easily she can use that share functionality that we know to make it available to select the people. Again, PR normally, they don't work, they don't show that draft to everyone, but they could be people, maybe her, uh, maybe um, Juliet herself that need to uh, double check and maybe actually approve it, right? So um, she can call it, approve this, please. This is all private between the PR team, uh, which in this case is only money, but could be more people, and Juliet. Nobody else sees it. Very simple and straightforward. And as you can see, uh, it was quick for Hermione to just direct to Juliet, direct to the CEO in this case, but obviously it can be someone else that needs to uh, double check things. Uh, it's easy for her to show it directly to Juliet. I was just going to make a, a, a... Juliet can do... Marco, if it's all right, please. Uh, I think that's a great example whereby um, you know, frankly, sometimes um, the bosses, um, the leaders, you know, they don't want necessarily the involvement in day to day stuff in your teams. But, mm -hmm. you know, as Marco is demonstrating yes. here, when, when it gets to the stage that that final approval is, is required, um, you can loop them yeah. in, as Marco just showed, really quickly, really simply to get that approval and then off mm -hmm. you go. So I'll let you get back to it, Marco. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. That's exactly uh, why this something like this will happen. And also, interesting enough, because you have metadata, there can be a communication between the two. They don't have to talk about it on Slack or outside. Uh, uh, Juliet can either just you know give it an approval here, remove maybe the question mark, and say, okay, it's good now. Or maybe she is going to say, oh no, there's a problem here. And even using a more verbose method of field, she could actually specify. Um, actually, could you? you make it better, which is a very useful, useful advice if you ever had an editor coming back to you with something like this. Uh, I, I'm sure you love it. Anyway. Nothing, uh, nothing like aside, constructive feedback. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we, I'm sure we all got that from someone at some point in our lives. Anyway, uh, so that's sort of like a way you can work. Of course, uh, one thing that you may know, if you don't know, you'll be happy to hear that we're planning a more fully fledged uh, chat system within Chorus. We're hoping for in the next you know, two or three months, maybe uh, towards the end of the summer, uh, for Chorus 3.0, one of the main features will be a chat. And not just a chat, each folder or each file also individually will have its own chat. So in this case, Juliet and Armani will be chatting away on that same uh, tab that I was showing you before, or near there, while finishing up the design without anybody else seeing it and without that being uh, available because it's not relevant to other people. So that's an easy way for people to say communicate. Again, you upload things onto chorus and you know they just get easily shared. And if she makes a new draft, she can just replace this one and grab a, the new file and just have something else as a new version directly on chorus. No need to have a lot of different board files all over the place, keep sending them over back and forth via email, which is just a mess. Obviously, you could imagine they would also want to collect images for a specific event control, what goes out in social media, for, on social media, for example. So that's where they can 
they will have some media. They'll probably do handle pictures or videos of events. Remember that you can also store videos in Quora. So that's an example of some of the videos that'll probably be the PR ones, the ones they want to be sort of like visible as what our company should have. And how do you actually go about getting all these things and giving them to the whole company, right? That's what PR also does. They are all only outward facing in, as in preparing speeches like this one or articles for the public. They sometimes just say, collect the uh, official, you know, company documents and make sure that every employee has it. That's where collection can come into place. Collections uh, are like playlists, right? You don't have to move them out of folders, but you can put things in a playlist like this one. See, there's a video and a leaflet already. Uh, we could take this whole folder maybe and drag it in here. And, or we could say, um, add some guidelines. Here I have some guidelines for speeches. So when you talk, you should follow these guidelines. Put them all in this collection. They're still in the folders. I haven't messed up my sort of like, um, nice structure for my for my space, for my PR space for my niche is very peculiar, but being things being tidy and, and in the right folders. But now I have this additional playlist, additional holding space. I haven't duplicated anything. Those are just links to the original files. And now that I have it this way, I can just take it like I've done here, use the share folder share, even though it's a collection of a folder. And if we have a quick look, I've done it already. In the everyone space, you'll see that I get exactly that same collection. So everyone can get in here, everybody can see it. What if they don't log in very often to Chorus? Hermione can even get the path to this specific uh, area that where all the stuff that they want, that she wants all the company to see. And this is a URL. You can just then give it to people like this, you copy paste, put in like, in your official website, in a newsletter, maybe you can put it on, on, on a Slack channel, however you can reach everybody. And if people follow this link, once they log in, it gets them directly to this place. See, so it's very, very simple for Hermione to grab everything that she wants all the company to see, get a nice quick URL, give it to people and say, hey, remember if you ever post on social media about a green day, you have to use one of the approved, pic approved pictures. So here's the link, get them from here easy enough, or same, same thing for like leaflets or guidelines and things like that. What if people Marco, don't want to use, uh, yeah? Cool. I was just going to add in that just uh, for those of you that haven't used path URLs yet, that if you actually go and look at an image or a video file and in the preview, oh, yeah. you can also take the path URL from there too. Uh, so whether it's a container, like a that folder or a collection, or as Marco is just going to demonstrate yeah. here, from a single image. Yeah. It's really useful little functionality. So sorry, Marco, I just thought I'd chip in with the, the preview element too. That's very good to say, yeah, because it's a new feature. We literally just released it. So it's, it's probably most of you probably haven't noticed it unless you've seen the uh, update um, on, on new features that we sent out when you the new releases out. So thank you guys. But yeah, that works with any file individually as well. So for example, these guidelines here, which I just got on the internet. I have no idea what's in here. I literally just copy paste it. Uh, and uh, you copy the clipboard, send it over, and it will send people to that file directly. Um, it's gonna bring you to that folder, wherever you can see that file, it could be in a collection or uh, wherever you have access to it, and that file will be highlighted. Again, you'd need to have access to the file. You're not gonna be able to, uh, to give someone a URL that, to a file they can't normally see when they go into Chorus. You can, but it won't work for them. Uh, but as long as they can access it, see, it gets highlighted. So um, yeah, so that's very simple and easy, but if you also want to make it even easier, as you probably know, anything in Chorus in this collection in particular can also be linked. Maybe linked in a different way, I should say then, because now we have multiple ways of doing things. So let's company, company spirit, because this is gonna be, uh, we're actually gonna give it a vanity URL because uh, this is for the whole company, so I don't mind that it's easy to sort of guess and remember. And now I have it on this very quick link. And as you know, this shared link, so it doesn't need any login whatsoever. Uh, you can just give it to anyone, even if people that don't have a user profile. And here is actually always gonna be available, whether or not you normally have access to these files in this case you can. So, so as you can see, Chorus offers so many features to easily share and distribute and, and uh, disseminate your, your files and your, of all kinds, documents, videos, and uh, pictures that PR teams, public relations teams will find it much, much more useful than say a file server 
where things are stored nice and tidy, but then are hard to find, hard to send around. You have to use emails. You have to use uh, other services that are more clunky. And re remember, it's on the same cloud as everybody else in the company. So as you can see, I can have folders in common, et cetera. And one okay, last thing I want to just... kind of point out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, so I'm just going to, you know, throw a, throw a curveball in there. But so, for example, yeah. you've you've set up this collection of all of the company documents, et cetera, that people can access. But what about, like, say, um, you know, an expiry date, you know, putting limits on on things. So, for example, you you mm -hmm. make sure that that means you get the prompt to, you know, update things in a timely manner when required. Yeah, so uh, actually there are expiry dates as well. So I'm gonna actually uh, answer your question, but sort of like integrating it to what else I was going to show you because that's that's sort of like easier for me, I already have to say that. But remember that as Guy sort of like uh, mentioned, it, he knows the answer, of course, he's asking me so, so I could pay, tell people. Anyone uh, you can talk about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can set expiry dates against anything on Chorus. And I'll show you how that uh, works in a second. So just to show you what this is as well, uh, you notice this little graph. Um, oh, I, I said, all right, uh, paper perplex, that's the English name. I always call them graphettes because I think that's the French name, but it's paper clips. So you can see those paper clips. In chorus, and we'll get to the expiry date in a second, you can also, PR teams will love this, attach any file to any file. And most prominently, you're going to attach consent forms to pictures, right? You're going to need that probably a lot. So let's have a look how it, how it looks like. So I can take this file. And just very quickly, because I can see there's a, there's a paper clip, I can go and click view attachment and very, very fast, I'm there um, at the consent form, which I can now review. Uh, I can go the other way around as well. Uh, let's go to the original quickly. There's a folder with all the consent forms. And you can see actually, now I'm in the folder with the consent forms, which I could have just navigated to. You can see this one says expired. This was with all files, pictures, videos, documents, et cetera. But with consent forms, I can quickly go into my, if I go into my folder here and I can see this is expired, how fast, how quick can I get to the picture that, you know, needs a new consent form? Well, it's very fast. I can just go attachments, view attached to. That's it, right? So it's very simple for PR to also now uh, keep an eye on what's expired. Very nice, easy to see banner. Obviously, you can search for it. You can have a smart collection against it and all that. And so see okay we need to renew this thing uh, now what happens to an expired file this goes back to links say that we don't have the consent form now so what i want to do is i want to go to the attached to and say okay well this picture now uh we don't have the consent form how do we quickly remove it from any link or anything that sort of like uh, we make it less available but we can put now the, ex the expiry date to that same picture. So this one does not expire date uh, set form anymore. Let's give an expiry date to this picture. So very quick again for me to deactivate this picture almost. It's still here. You haven't deleted anything. So I haven't lost the picture. Eventually I'm going to get a new consent form, right? So I want to be able to put it back uh, to available. But now that I expired it, if this was in any link, it will just disappear from the link. And here I won't be allowed to download it regardless of uh, what permission I normally have. So there's a very quick way for you to see if something has expired and also to act on it and sort of expire things so they're less available to other people. Again, all things that we designed for uh, I mean GDPR in mind, especially, but because we realize that some people use Chorus in a very creative, fast, media-oriented way, but we also wanted a few people that need a Chorus uh, uh, with more security and safety and control over processes to have enough uh, options and features to facilitate that too. And I think that sort of like goes, goes into a lot of things. Yeah, tell me guys. Uh, I was just going to say, like what we were talking about earlier in terms of, I think GDPR was a, a really great point to bring up. And I think, you know, that relates to another thing. Obviously, um, you're not able to keep certain data for forever. Um, but one other mm -hmm. thing we can do, of course, we were talking about earlier is in that demo Marco just gave with the consent form and the image, um, you know, as the employee, you know, stays with the company and is doing well, et cetera, for a few years, perhaps, you know, it's a, it's a thing that it's a, it's a yearly photo. So you can actually replace oh, yeah. files too, and you can actually see the timeline, say of, you know, employee A's mm -hmm. 
you know, photos and consent forms yeah. over their period working for the company. So, you know, just another little side sort of Actually, caveat. Yeah. You get, yeah. You give me a good idea. Let's say that we just took this picture today. This is like we got everyone on the company took everybody's pictures, and we want to make sure that we're gonna get new pictures next year, right? Just to just to to get them fresh. So I can select everything, common day on my keyboard, uh, or Control A if you're using Windows, and then batch at it. And then I can give everyone an expiry date, uh, replace, and let's put it for next year, May 2021. And save. Now, hopefully, hopefully everyone's hair is okay by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every all these pictures now. Uh, this one should I have changed. Uh, all these pictures now will expire in a year. Oh, they okay. now that the thing went away. Okay, you can see that. So that's very very useful. And how do I make sure that I remember that? Well, Hermione in a private or a private space, she's in charge of these things anyway. She can just quickly create a smart collection, expiring uh, pictures. And then she could say, okay, tell me, make sure, show me in here when any anything is within the next 30 days. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna just put permissions in there too. What's gonna happen now? Now it's gonna be empty because nothing is about to expire. But, oh, unless I did it wrong. Did I put it wrong? <laughs> I don't think. Let me see. Let me see what I put in it. Uh, I must have done the the search wrong. Let me just quickly. So the expiry date is twenty one. Okay, perfect. All right, that, that is good. So edit search is beyond the next. Okay, and no. Okay, see, it's beyond. This is not what I wanted to do. It's within the next ten days. Within the next thirty days. Beyond is uh, something means something else. I just picked the wrong way to drop down. Now they should all quickly disappear. There you go. So what's going to happen now uh, is I have a smart collection that is currently empty, but a month before I have to retake those pictures, they're all going to show up in here. So Hermione, she logs in, she goes into a private space and checks, oh, stop, stop showing up. Okay, we need to work on these things now. You know, a month in advance is enough time for you to rearrange your photo shoot, I guess. Uh, so there's a lot of little tricks and things you could do uh, to, to help you between private space and smart collections to manage all these things uh, because everything is very nicely uh, consistent and working together and a lot of it is powered by metadata which allows you to do searches and smart collections uh, it's very very handy and you get a lot of tools that you don't really don't get in and you end up doing a lot of manual work instead so i think chorus for many of these reasons uh, it's a great tool for all sorts of teams not not just teams that focus on media but all, all sorts of teams within an organization. Yeah, well said. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, another aspect to consider with this is that, you know, when it comes to, you know, the final versions, the, the you know, the company videos that will be released across all channels, the, the um, print materials and so on, um, you know, being able to, to distribute those and share those um, from Chorus as well is a key point. Um, and of course, I think mm -hmm. like Marco and I are very conscious that, um, you know, when we do these webinars, it's it's about giving you a sort of an overview from a certain perspective. Um, yeah. Of course, you know, feel free, feel free to correct us on, on how PR works <laughs> if you like. But of course, yeah. um, thank you very much for the, for the demo, Marco. I thought it was really nicely done. And, and you know, of course, guys, we're into the last sort of eight minutes, I believe, seven minutes. Um, so, of course, if there are yeah. any questions. On anything you've seen today um, or anything else chorus related then you know please you can enter questions into the chat mm -hmm. box here or feel free to um, unmute yourselves and shout out <laughs> yeah well even if you have a question about like what's coming to chorus because some of you may know that we're getting near now to 3.0 uh, the third sort of like uh, big release of chorus uh, I guess it's been three years now since we had chorus or well, not two years and some, because it was 1.0, 2.0, 2.0, 2.0. And um, there's some exciting things coming. Uh, Sinker, uh, hopefully, will be, uh, should be around the same time, and chat and better audit logs and reporting tools. So if you have questions about anything else, uh, we can sort of probably answer that too. Uh, otherwise, yeah, as always, the recording for this will be available on a share link that you could probably already have so you'll just find it there or just ask and we'll give it to you 
and yeah, we, can, uh, we can share those without a problem. Yeah, because it's always good to go back and you know, rewatch the old ones. You know? And yes, you can you can catch every other every other episode of us uh, chatting through a variety mm-hmm. of things. And we'll we've been speaking about what we'll you know look at moving forward. Um, so we've got uh, this year we'll be doing you know every two weeks there will be another um, webinar and we've got a variety of topics we'll be focusing on in the next few weeks. But I think one of the things we've been discussing um, for a while is doing one around you know okay you've you've bought this piece of software a piece of software mm-hmm. not necessarily ours but okay yeah like you've got it now great how are you going to get everyone to use it um how are you yeah. going to help them adapt adapt to it and of course you know i'm slightly biased here because um you know i'm responsible for training um at third light so of course um i'm uh, a fan of Oh, mm-hmm. sorry. sorry Mark I think you, okay. you just turn your screen off um I don't so oh, I we, I in terms of what we we can do um it's very much a case of uh being able to just help across the board so yeah sorry my computer just mm-hmm. went absolutely haywire on me there so sorry oh, okay. uh, no, it was fine on my side yeah but so of course, we, we, if we, there are we, any we questions about, yeah. on anything yeah. um feel free to fire them in or to follow up with us um, in due course mm-hmm. after this session oh, today. Uh... Um, but the next one will be on software rollout challenges and some some good tips and some ideas. I mean, a number of us yeah. um, working at uh, Third Light, you know, we've been we've yeah. worked I, through I, this in I a number see... of ways. So yeah, I can see that there's a couple of attendees. I don't know what that means in the team, but someone raised their hand, and another one. Uh, so I don't know if. If you if you raise your hand, maybe you did it by mistake. Uh, but just leave an, uh, look your question in in the question box or chat. Uh, we can't just um, let you kind of like your audio in. Uh, we rather have the questions in in writing. I don't know if possible. You click that button by mistake. I'm talking to the attendee that has that hand raised. I don't want to out them and say their name, of course. Um, sorry, I just want to say that just to make sure that uh, that person understands uh, sort of like how to submit questions, which is to, to type them out. Um, yeah, no, I, I want to say I'm, I'm quite excited about that webinar we're putting together that you were mentioning about software rollout, because it's something that a lot of our customers, well, all of them have to go through it, and some um, find it more of an obstacle than others. And there's definitely some tips that we can give on what you should focus on and what kind of things would be good to do. We can't promise that we can give you the perfect formula, but uh, we can give you some good food for thought uh, and uh, hopefully nudge you in the right direction. Uh, every case will be unique, but there's obviously commonalities and uh, things that uh, will always be applicable when it comes to you buy a piece of software, you need to get people to use it. This is a common problem, right? So there's also I common solutions. It's it's something that, um, you know, someone that worked for a global company once and had some really bad software <laughs> rollouts, um, oh, the problem, I the and I think I think we've all yeah. had it and I think you know what I'd like to think we're all very conscious of at Third Light is is that you know Chorus is a great piece of software but it will be you know one of a number of pieces of software you use to do your job yeah. um, so striking yes, that exactly. balance is, is is really really important to us uh, and I'd like to think we do a good job of that so yeah I look forward to being able to to, to sort of utilize everyone else's experience and, and give you some you know useful tips that you might well be able to uh, to put into practice yourselves um, and then we'll be looking at you know creative teams you know if you think more sort of in the terms of the graphic design and so on um, and also yeah. kind of off the back of the software rollout challenges we'll also um, have a webinar focusing on change management so similar but yeah. but different and 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 kind of interlinked. So that's the next um, few sessions of webinars. And I, I've got to say, so Mark, I'm not sure if I actually mentioned this to you, but I did notice mm-hmm. on the attendee list today that there were actually a couple of people um, who I won't call out here, um, but mm-hmm. they work at a school in Bishop Stortford that I actually went to as a child. So <laughs> okay. I just wanted to say it was really nice to see. Um, the email your email addresses and I thought well, you know just made me laugh and smile uh-huh. and 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 for reference I was in uh, Hayward House 
many moons ago. So I just wanted to say it's very nice to see uh, the names pop up on the list today. Yeah, it's always fun. It's always interesting and, and makes you happy when something from your past or like when you're when well, you're a kid comes back. Uh, I mean, yeah. hang on a sec, Mark. It's also made me feel very old today. But you know, other than that. It was... <laughs> Well, that's in your head, but that's your problem. Like, you yeah, can okay. take it in a good way or take it in a bad day, but bad way. You decide how you how you approach that that feeling. No, that's very anyway. true. All right. Well, listen. In in which case, um, if we haven't had any questions, then you know what we'll do is we'll we'll wrap it up for now. Oh, and on the last point, um, <laughs> I've just got a love, that's really sweet of you. Yes, I would. Um, yes, I would, Sarah. I'd absolutely <laughs> love that. And my address is guy.johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, at thirdlight.com. Um, okay. So, yeah, I'd absolutely love that. It's really sweet of you. So, yeah, guys, it's 3.30. We'll wrap up. Thank you very much, Marco. Sterling job again. Yeah, thank you. Look forward to seeing you. Oh, you as well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers.